Hey guys, we finally finished covering our bear hawk. In this video, we want to show you how we did the fuselage and then talk about um, our thoughts on the product and the process. Stick around if you're interested in the details. Okay, so believe it or not, this is actually our third video we've done on Oratex. So a couple of things. One, we're gonna try our best to not repeat information that we had in the previous videos. And two, I'm getting kind of tired of making videos on Oratex, and I'm sure you guys are getting tired of listening to me ramble about it. So Amanda's gonna help me out, and she's going to tell you how we did the fuselage. Okay, Amanda, tell them how we did it. Okay, so we started with the right side of the fuselage. First, we cut a piece of Oratex, laid it over the side of the fuselage, and started to cut around anything keeping the fabric from laying all the way down. Then, we used magnets and spring clamps to hold it in place. Once we had the piece positioned the best we could, we went around and marked everywhere to glue. I held the fabric in place and provided some resistance while Colby marked it with a pencil. We moved the piece over to a couple of workbenches to be glued. As an aside, it's fairly easy to put a crease in Oratex, especially with large pieces like this. If it's bad enough, there will still be a faint line, even once the fabric has been shrunk. Next, we scuffed up everything on the fuselage that the fabric would touch with sandpaper and then cleaned it all with denatured alcohol. At this point, we were ready to start gluing. Both surfaces got two coats of glue, allowing the glue to dry completely in between coats. We were a little worried about putting on such large pieces by ourselves, so Colby's dad and their new puppy came down to help. Once we repositioned the piece of fabric on the fuselage, we started to tack it in place. We worked our way from the front to the back. After we got some of the key points tacked down, we would pull the fabric tight to minimize wrinkles. This is how things looked after we finished tacking it down, but before setting the glue and shrinking the fabric. The next step was setting the glue. We started on the laundrons and then worked our way to the tailpost. Where the leading edge of the vertical stabilizer meets the top stringers was a struggle for us. So this is probably more of a what not to do. We started by heating away from the point and trying to stretch the fabric as much as we could. Then we moved closer and closer to the edge, stretching and making strategic cuts to get the fabric down to the base of the vertical stabilizer. Once we got the fabric pulled down, we wrapped it around the vertical stabilizer tube and the stringer. To achieve this, I think we stretched the fabric to its limit because it lost its sheen and ripped in one spot. At the top, we terminated the side pieces to the aluminum stringers, wrapping the fabric completely around the stringers to provide as much gluing surface as possible. At the door sills, we wrapped the fabric back to the inside and terminated it on top of the interior fabric. We also wrapped the fabric clear around the laundrons and vertical stabilizer. We put two inspection holes on both sides of the tail. We made a large inspection hole where the elevators join out of the 032 aluminum and riveted nut plates to it. After it was primed, dried, and glue was applied, we set it in place. Next, we shrank the fabric on the tail to remove any wrinkles immediately followed by setting the fabric to the inspection frame. While doing this, somebody would hold pressure on the frame from the back side while setting the glue on the outside. 
Next, we cut the inspection hole out, wrapping the excess around to the inside. Then both of these surfaces were glued and set with the heat gun. For the inspection holes at the front of the horizontal stabilizers, we just purchased and installed plastic inspection rings. After the glue had been set and fully cured to the main structural points, we shrank out all of the remaining wrinkles. FYI, this area was not tight enough. We had to shrink the fabric quite a bit, which made it lose some of its sheen in this area. We waited to apply glue where the stringers and ribs would contact the fabric until we had stretched out all of the wrinkles. It was still pretty easy to push the fabric away and glue directly behind the ribs and stringers at this point. Next up was the left side. This side was largely the same as the right side, but there were a few differences I'll point out. After gluing both the surfaces on the fuselage and the fabric, we placed the inspection holes where they needed to be since we wouldn't have access through the other side this time during installation. We held the rear inspection hole in place on the fuselage temporarily with a couple dabs of super glue. Then we repositioned the piece of fabric, tacked it in place, and set it to the fuselage. Setting the fabric to the vertical stabilizer and stringer junction on the left side was a little easier. I'd like to think this is because we learned something from doing the right side, but it was mainly because the bottom of the vertical stabilizer is offset towards the left side, so we didn't have to pull the fabric quite as far. The other difference on the left side was attaching the fabric to the window frames. We used the iron to set the fabric to the outside of the frames, then cut the inside out, leaving enough excess to tuck inside the frame channel. We put in a piece of plexiglass the same thickness as the windows will be and heated things up for a good period to soak all the way through and activate the glue on both sides. To do the D at the back of the rear window, we cut out little notches and then pushed them into place with a piece of scrap plexiglass. Next, we taped off and glued for the overlap of the bottom piece. FYI, carefully positioning the bottom piece allowed us to have enough excess to use on the top. I think it's also worth noting that putting the bottom piece on first seems to be the most popular method. This is mostly so the seam will be hidden on the bottom. We're glad we put the bottom on after the sides, because it was nice having that access at times while putting on those challenging sides and it should make it pretty easy to replace the bottom without replacing the sides if we ever need to. And let's be honest, if a visible seam bothered us, we probably wouldn't be using Oratex in the first place. The only spot that was a little different on the bottom was where the fabric terminated on the front. The 3 8 inch tube seemed like a fairly minimal gluing surface area, so we brought the fabric back around and glued it to itself for a few inches. For the top piece, we measured out a three and a half inch overlap and masked and glued it. The way the roof formers come from the factory, you can either cover it completely with fabric or just cover the center and install Lexan panels in the sides. We would like to have the skylights, so we cut the fabric and wrapped it inside the front window screen and skylight panel channels, similar to how we did on the side window. We also extended this top piece back over the top of the lower vertical stabilizer to cover and reinforce the small tears we made. Next, we did some rib stitching. We chose to stitch the top stringers for a little ways. It sounds like many people get along just fine without doing this, but it made us feel better about terminating to the aluminum stringers in this location. Then we stitched the ribs and the vertical stabilizer and taped all of the stitching. 
We taped all of the seams in the same fashion that we did the tail feathers. We also taped over all of the channels we terminated at for the windows, skylights, and windscreen. We did this by setting the fabric to the outside, then pushing the fabric all the way down into the channel, setting it to the inside, and setting the fabric to the inside of the channels using something the same thickness as the material that will be used. At the front, we taped across the entire length of the former for a more consistent look. Last up, we covered the gear legs. These were covered with one piece wrapping around the front and terminating in the back, similar to how we did the horizontal stabilizers. We covered the back side first and then the front so the seam would be on the inside of the legs. That pretty well covers how we did the fuselage. Now we'll bring Colby back for some of his thoughts on our experience. All right, Oratex wrap up. So first, I promised a couple of people that we would publish the quantities of everything that we used. A few things to note here. First, I expect mileage must vary significantly because my usage was a good bit different than what Better Aircraft Fabric recommended I order. When I was ordering, I was clear that this was for the new Model 5 and explained that it was larger, and I still received the same recommended quantities the four-place builders get. I assumed that this was because they felt that most four-place builders have enough excess to make up for the larger size of the 5. I just wanted to note that I might have used more than the typical builder would use. Generally, we tried not to be wasteful, but there were a couple of spots that I could see how people would use less material than us. One, we tried to leave pretty comfortable margins when we were cutting so that there was plenty to grab a hold of and have a good handhold to help pull it around in spots like the rudder and areas where we needed to stretch it quite a bit. We also frequently glued a little further past where we actually could have quit because we didn't want to take the time to precisely measure out exactly how much overlap there would be or something like that. So we would just leave a little margin of error. So it doesn't surprise me that we used a little more glue than some people would. I actually ended up using about 100 feet more of the finishing tapes than was recommended to purchase. I'm not entirely sure how I ended up using so much. I realize others might be able to do it with a few less seams so there'd be less tape, but I don't know. Others must be cutting some of their own finishing tapes or quite a few of their finishing tapes or something like that, I'm, I'm assuming, because that's, that's quite a bit of difference. One quick note about the Ortex masking tape. Um, it seemed to be really good stuff. It was definitely kind of pricey, but um, I got one roll of it and that was enough to do all the kind of visible seams and, and the things that would really stand out. And I was glad to have it. But if you were going to tape everything with that, you would need at least two rolls because I used regular masking tape for a lot of the stuff that was less visible. All right, thoughts on Oratex in general. I'm gonna give the product a, a B plus. I'm happy with the product and I hope it holds up as well as I think it's going to. There were a few small blemishes on the product when we received it. Some things were certainly a little stressful and challenging for a slow learning newbie, but overall I thought it was a good product and it was enjoyable to work with. I can't really comment on the, the manufacturer's documentation, but more on that in a little bit. I'm giving sales an A-. minus. Um, so all of the North American sales are handled through Better Aircraft Fabrics in Alaska. Um, Janina is the lady that handles all the sales and she was very great to work with, polite and fairly responsive. Um, it would be nice if they joined the 21st century and you could order off their website, but otherwise it was a good experience. Unfortunately, I have to give technical support a D minus. Um, I tried for four or five months to try to get a few questions answered, and I never did. On their website, it says that the, your, your order will come with instructions. Um, I had two orders, one for the interior fabric and one for the exterior fabric. Neither came with any instructions, and I reached out and asked for the instructions, and I got a tips and tricks 
document or something like that. Um, there's a lot of really good information in that document and I, I wouldn't have been able to do it without it. Um, but it certainly left quite a few questions still. Um, I, I reached back out and asked for the formal documentation because at the end of the tips and tricks document was a big disclaimer that they weren't actually the real instructions and you should use the manufacturer's instructions or whatever. Um, but Lars replied back eventually that these were better than the manufacturer's instructions to use them and um, he would give me a call and we would talk about my questions that I had. Well, that never happened. Fortunately for me, Bearhawk builder Simon Nicholson who covered his four place with Ortex helped answer all of my questions and he sent you know many pictures showing his process and and took the time to explain the details that were fuzzy to me and really helped us out quite a bit. Overall I, I think it's a good product. My biggest complaint is that it's priced like a premium product but I don't think the technical support and the documentation is consistent with a premium product. But I think that if it holds up as well as we expect it to, we'll be very happy with our decision. If I was to ever cover another plane with a similar mission, I would absolutely consider using it again. All right, that was an excessive amount of rambling and hopefully it didn't come off as whiny. But I am very happy that we don't have to stop what we're doing now, set up a paint booth and go through the painting process before we can move forward. And I'm also pretty excited to finally use this iron for its intended purpose. We'll see you guys in the next one.